So I might have come to a pretty embarrassing realization the other day, folks, as while I have indeed covered all the exclusive weapon and armors of Don't Starve Together and Don't Starve Shipwrecked, apparently I have completely neglected Don't Starve Hamlets. Heck, you can even argue that I have unintentionally avoided it, as I could have sworn that I have done something like this already. But nope. Nope, I have not. A fact that many of you have been trying to tell me for literal years at this point. So I apologize. Here I was thinking I had covered it all and was about to update older guides when there's actually still new ones to be made. But let's suit up. And first up, the Mant Suit. Essentially Hamlet's special version of log armor, the Mant Suit requires one itself, alongside five pieces of chitin for 80% protection and 450 durability. Initially, that is. For you see, while equal to a log suit in stats, a mat suit will lose durability while worn as well as when it's hit. So why even bother with an armor that deteriorates over time, you ask? Well, what if we could sew it back up? We can restore 50% of a mat suit durability with one click if we wish, which gives it a major step up from normal armor in my opinion. Plus, it's but part one of a two-piece set. Not only that though, with both the mat suit and mask here, both requiring other armors to create them, we can convert low durability lock suits and football helmets into armors that are their essential equals. As yes, as you can see, a mat mask gives the exact same protection and durability as the football helmet needed to make it. Mats cannot be sewn together, however, nor do they actually retain a football helmet's wetness protection, so do be mindful there. But hold up, Beard. Why not just keep making log suits and football helmets then? Why do we care if we look like a mat for Pete's sake? Ah, you're forgetting about the set bonus. Put both mat armors together, and all mats in the game will accept you as their own and remain neutral to you no matter how close you get. Well, most mats that is, as warriors will see through this disguise, but you will still be free to roam pretty much all mat hills otherwise. It's good stuff. But before we move on, you should probably know how to actually get the chitin needed to create some of the armors here today. Mats themselves drop one 25% of the time, with warriors given a peace guaranteed. Scorpions encountered in pig ruins and or fallen from rainforest trees have a 30% chance to provide some chitin. Dung beetles here found all over Hamlet offer a 50% chance for one, which is really nice. Rabbit beetles give one 20% of the time if killed outside of your inventory, but 60% of the time if trapped. And finally, the Queen Womat will drop four chitin guaranteed. Good luck. Now why go through all that? Because our time with chitin is not done, folks. The Weevil Mantle would like a word. Costing two more chitin and four chunks of what's called Weevil Carapace, the Weevil Mantle offers a low 60% damage absorption rate, yes, however its whopping 900 durability leaves it close to the top of all armors across all of Don't Starve history. Not only that, it is one of the only pieces of chess gear in the game that can be worn during humid season's heavy fall. That said, it still won't protect against wearing most additional headgears, so make note there. It's not too bad, honestly, and it's easy to get, too. Weevil carapaces are a guaranteed drop by weevils themselves, and weevils themselves spawn from bundles of tall grass every single night, making for very easy farming. Good stuff. But now comes the big ones, the tin armor sets. The tin suit is up to bat first and costs three alloy, stuff we'll be talking about here soon, and a hammer of all things. Tin suits boast a damage absorption rate of 80%, which is the sixth highest among all chest armor across Don't Starve, mind you, as well as 1200 durability, which is number three overall. Oh yes, it's good, like really good even if each suit will slow us down by 20% overall. Because here's the thing, speed penalties can be easily negated with walking canes, and as you'll soon discover, alloy is surprisingly easy to amass in Don't Starve Hamlets. So if you're more of a head guy and want a fancy helmet, I wouldn't worry about resources all that much. 
Fancy helmets are essentially tin suits with a little extra wetness protection as you can see. And yes, if you do use both, don't expect to be winning any marathons anytime soon. But how do we actually get the goods needed for either, you ask? Pretty easily. With a smelter. I say that knowing how limited resources can get in Hamlet and how coming across a red gem won't exactly be a walk in the park either. But hey, I know you can do it. And once you do, be sure to get some iron in it in order to turn four chunks of it into alloy. Our material in question, of course. Schmelt away. Oh, but note too that we have a 16.67% chance to get tin armor from bandit stashes, which is pretty neat. Good luck. Or perhaps you should save some of that luck for this next guy. The Vortex Cloak. To even have a chance at crafting one, you will have to make it to two in Apocalypse. Be it a natural one that starts on day 61, or a forced one if you have found the calendar early. But whatever the case, you will also have to murder a literal ancient in the Ancient Herald for the blueprint and materials needed for the armor itself, and only then will you be able to enjoy bone armor and a backpack all at once. And yes, you heard that right. The Vortex Cloak will act as a bone armor by blocking incoming damage from everything but other heralds and nightmares, all the while also being a backpack. Oh, and it's refuelable via Nightmare Fuel too, so there you go. Just mind the sanity loss through it all. But to wrap up our day, a couple character specific pieces of gear, starting with Wormwood's OG Bramble Husk. Costing living logs and bone shards, the OG Bramble offers 100 more uses than his Star Star Together counterparts, 65% damage absorption, which has always been kind of questionable, and the ability to damage all mobs around us by 22.6 when we get hits. Not bad. Plus, it will protect all wearers from all things spiky across all planes of the constant, if you know what I mean. And finally, Wagstaff's very own visor, costing his spec toggles and cutstone. Visors here are pretty insane, as they not only offer 600 durability, which is quite high for headgear, it also boasts an 85% damage absorption rate, which is even higher than Wigfrid's battle helms, everybody. Heck, it's higher than most armors in the flipping game, if we're honest. And yes, it does counter the fog. Have fun. And there you have it, everyone. A very long overdue guide on all the exclusive armors of Don't Starve Hamlets. Many thanks to all the people who continuously bug me about my lack of coverage. And special thanks to many of those same people who reminded me mere weeks ago. This one's for you, if nothing else. Hamlet weapons are next, so I'll see you again soon. Thanks for watching, folks. Well wished to all, suit up, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.